Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy Damien back with another video about the EOS R6. You know these kind of YouTubers? Yeah, that's so much. <laughs> We've shot a lot of video on the EOS R6 in the past, but it was mainly BTS for our YouTube channel with a little bit of commercial work here and there, but most of the times we were using the EOS R5 or our C300 Mark III. But then our Crane 2S came in and I thought this was the perfect opportunity to not only test the Crane 2, but also the EOS R6. And one of the things I was most curious about is the low light capabilities, because it's said to be better than the EOS R5, so naturally we actually went out at night and tested the thing. The entire shoot came together extremely spontaneously because it's been raining a lot here and we only had one night where it wasn't. So I hit up my friend Salo, which is a bike fanatic, and I thought it would be really cool to test the gimbal and the R6 on a night shoot with her bike. And if you haven't watched the finished video, it's only two minutes long, I link it up here. So check it out before you actually watch this video and then come back here and then we'll talk about what kind of equipment we used how I did the editing and my first impression of the EOS R6 when it comes to video. As the name of the video suggests, I wanted to get a contrast of the typical model shoots that we do when we just have a girl walk around in slow motion, but also show her badass side with her being on the bike. Since it was really freezing, we wanted to get all the riding shots out of the way first. And our idea was pretty simple. Just take the R6, put it on the Crane 2S and hang it out of the window of a moving car. Simple enough, right? And to my surprise, that actually worked very well. Unfortunately, I wanted to use my GoPro to actually document the whole thing, but I got an SD card error all the time, so unfortunately I don't have any footage of this. And here I was really surprised about two things. Number one, the ability of the Crane 2S to really take on the 28 to 70, even when I balanced it to 28 millimeters. And during the shoot, I also went to 70 millimeters. So the gimbal was way off balance, but the motors were strong enough to actually hold its own. So not only did I get really stable shots, but also the horizon stayed level for most of the time. And that was really surprising to me because we were going about 40 to 50 miles an hour with the gimbal and the camera hanging out of the window. Also, for all of these shots, I just used autofocus and the R6 did a really good job of just finding her on the bike and not really focusing on any other things or focus hunting at all. So once we got all of our riding shots, hanging the gimbal out of the side window as well as out of the back window, we actually moved on to our regular shooting. And our first location here was in front of the Viennese Palace and I really liked this for our opening scene. The problem was it really wasn't well lit. So we're actually filming at ISO 25600 right now, which is insane and I have no idea if we can actually use this, but we're about to find out. Uh, can you exactly move a little? So I had to go all the way up to 25,600 ISO and I was really surprised at how clean the results were without using any denoiser. So before we get into any specific shots, let's talk about the overall equipment that I used. Obviously, I used the EOS R6 with a 256GB V90 Angelbird card and the only lens that I used for the entire shoot was our beloved 28-70 2.0 lens. To make it more stable on the gimbal, as well as being able to mount stuff to it later, I used our original EOS R cage and although this isn't 100% fit, it worked well enough. As I've already mentioned, for all of the driving shots, I only used the EOS R6 with the cage 28-70 mounted to the gimbal and I just used the internal screen. But then when we had a little bit more time and a little bit more space, I wanted to attach a monitor to it to get my framing right as well as my exposure. And as my monitor of choice for this shoot, I actually used the PortKeys LH5H on camera touchscreen monitor. And the cool thing about that monitor is that you can control your camera with it. So not only can you start and stop recording, but you can also change your ISO, shutter, as well as your aperture without having to access the camera while it's mounted on the gimbal. You can even do a manual focus, but the only thing you can do is use the touch to focus that you can with the internal touchscreen monitor. That would be amazing, but unfortunately that feature isn't out there yet. So this was our setup for all the gimbal shots, but I wanted to get some handheld shots in later. Unfortunately... So, I tied the cables to the gimbal with reusable cable ties, which I usually do, but in this case, I didn't use reusable cable ties, but an actual cable tie, 
So now all my cables are detached to the gimbal and I can't detach them anymore. So from now on we're going handheld with the internal monitor, without the external monitor, because I can't get my cables. So now since I couldn't use the external monitor because all the cables were tied to the gimbal, I just used the internal monitor instead. Other than that, I used the top handle from Small Rig to get these low angle shots and just get a little bit more stability when shooting and that's pretty much it. So now that we got all the equipment out of the way, let's talk about some actual shots. Our first location was in front of the Viennese Palace and I really like this illuminated pathway. Here I just wanted to get some establishing shots of her with the bike and also her turning on the bike, etc. What are we trying to do? Um, so we're trying to do some frame blocking and I think it's kind of cool if she's like passing through here. So we finished up all our motorcycle stuff and we switched outfits. So now we're filming some normal model shoot stuff that we're usually filming and as for our location, this is where Jennifer Lawrence filmed a scene in one of her movies and rightfully so because this location is pretty cool and yeah, let's start filming. So what I'm going to do now is one of my secret signature moves, you're gonna love it, you're gonna love it, it's gonna be the, it's the best signature move ever, it's not, but I'm going to do a wide angle establishing shot and you're going to look towards the camera like this and then when I say now you're going to look towards the right and then I come from this side filming you while you're turning it's gonna be amazing she gets it she gets it here I really wanted to get the contrast going of her being badass on the bike opposed to her wearing classy clothes in a really classy location. Once we were getting all of our shots in at the bank, I decided to go handheld from now on, just moving further into the inner city of Vienna. So now moving on to our third location, we also got another outfit change in, adding a little bit of color to the whole setup and her being a mixture between badass and classy. Now let's move on to the shooting modes as well as a little bit of the post-production. I exclusively shot everything in 4K 50. 50 because we're in Europe and I didn't want to introduce any unnecessary flickering of any artificial lights outdoor. And I also wanted to have the option to slow everything down in post, so I decided to go with 4K 50 for the entire video. So when it came to the actual shooting, I shot everything wide open at an aperture of 2.0 with ISO ranging all the way up to 25,000. 600, depending what the scene required. In hindsight, I probably would have preferred to shoot 4K 25 with a lower shutter to introduce a little bit of motion blur when she was riding on the bike to suggest a little bit more movement, but I think it turned out pretty nice either way. So when it came to the overall raw cut, I did a pretty simple job and didn't use any fancy transitions. I just used a speed ramp here and there to transition from one scene to another. So now let's talk about a little bit about the color grading and I think color grading is always tricky when you shoot at night with a lot of artificial lights because you have a lot of mixed lights and different kind of white balance settings. In one shot your model might be illuminated with a 2800 Kelvin lamp and in the other shot she might be hit with a daylight lamp and you need to kind of find a balance between all these when you want to have a streamlight color grade. So before we get into the color process let's address something that a lot of people are curious about with the R6 and that is the white balance. Because yes I also found that the white balance is a little bit on the warmer side and there's also a little bit of a green yellow tint and especially when shooting in low light with a lot of artificial light and street lamps that actually becomes a problem sometimes because I was shooting at a white balance of 2800 Kelvin and still some of my shots were really yellowish orangey and I had to try to fix that in post. The 10-bit color actually gives you a lot of wriggle room to play with and still it was somewhat tricky to actually get rid of that orange in some shots but I think I did manage to do a somewhat decent job. My overall color grading process for this video was really simple. I already did a 30 second color grading tutorial and I will link this up here. And this is pretty much what I did for 90% of the shots. I just converted it manually to Rec 709 color space and then added one of our LUTs. And I used the Jumanji LUT from our Canon DSLR package and that worked really well to get this cinematic night feel. 
In some of the shots, the environment introduced way too much yellow and a little bit too much orange for my taste, so I had to manually correct the skin tones. And I used a plugin called Color Finale Pro, which I used to track her face and manually change her skin tones when I really wasn't satisfied with her skin color because there was too much orange in it. And if you're interested to check this plugin out, I will put a link in the description below, but I think it's exclusive to Final Cut Pro 10. Speaking of exclusive for Final Cut, I also wanted to add some anamorphic lens flares in some of the shots and I didn't really want to overdo it so I only used it on the shots when she was riding the bike and even there I tried to tone it down a little but I think it gave the whole scene a little bit more of a cinematic feel. And that plugin is called M Flare 2 by Motion VFX and that plugin is really awesome because you have a huge variety of different kind of lens flare, they are all 100% customizable and there's also a built-in mocker tracker so you don't have to do any of the tracking by yourself. Yourself. And again, I also did a video about that, which I will link up here. But if you want to check out their plugins in general, just use the link that is in the description below. And speaking of lens flares, when using the 28 to 70, I was really surprised because when we're shooting in front of the Vienna Opera, I really got some nice organic lens flares with the 28 to 70. And I haven't seen that on any of my other lenses. And I actually tried to recreate this with the 24 millimeter 1.4 that Bell was using on the EOS R5 to shoot the behind the scenes with and I wasn't able to recreate these kind of lens flares and I really was surprised that the 28 to 70 got such nice lens flares that actually looked a little bit anamorphic so that is just a side note when it comes to the 28 to 70. So we talked about the equipment, the on-location shooting, as well as the color grading. So the only thing left now is the sound design. And I really think that the overall sound design really tied the whole video together. And I also used it sometimes to transition from one scene to another. And that really gave the video a certain kind of feel to it. If you're familiar with motorbikes, yes, all the sounds were fake and artificially inserted and they also didn't really fit the machine that she was riding. But I wanted to give the whole video a little bit more of a speed feeling, so I didn't really want to use the original sounds of the motorcycle and just edit some of a really fast high-end machine. Both of the songs I used were from Artlist and I also talked about Artlist in various videos before and there's also a link in the description below. And as for all the sound design, I used most of the sound design from Epidemic Sound because they have a huge variety of different kind of sounds and there's also a link in the description below if you want to check that one out too. So now that we talked about everything, I want to give you my first impression and a little bit of a verdict of the R6 just for using it on the night shoot. A, I was really surprised about the clean 4K and I couldn't really see any difference of the 4K50 coming out of the R6 compared to the EOS R5 for example, so that is a really good thing. Also, I was really surprised about the low light capabilities and how clean of an image you get when shooting at an ISO of 25,600. So we also did some comparison to the EOS R5 since we already had it on location and I can definitely say that the R6 produces a much cleaner image when shooting at the exact same settings in really high ISO situations. So the one thing that did bother me about shooting with the R6 in low light was the actual green and yellowish color cast as well as all the colors being a little bit too warm. And I tried balancing this out by lowering the white balance in camera and I already shot at a white balance of 2800 Kelvin and yet some of the shots were a little bit too warm. Granted, we were shooting with a lot of artificial light and most of them were actually really orange and the LUT that I used was also already introducing a lot of that orangey kind of yellow cinematic feel to it. So the combination of all of it actually pushed the colors a little bit too much into the warm side and I was able to balance most of this out in post-production but that is just one thing to keep in mind when shooting on the EOS R6 and overall I felt the colors of the EOS R5 were a little bit more pleasing to me. And for everyone wondering about overheating, as I already mentioned, I shot everything in 4K50 the entire time. And especially when shooting out of the car, I didn't turn off the camera and I just had several long takes of four to five minutes at a time. And we never even got the overheating warning. Granted, it was freezing cold outside and I think the wind from driving really fast also helped cooling down the camera. But my experience overall was using the camera for a while. We didn't get too many overheating warnings. 
but when shooting in longer takes and that wasn't true for this case but for other cases we did get some overheating issues and I will talk about this in my full review about the EOS R6 that I will be doing in the near future so if you're interested in that make sure to subscribe to the channel but overall I had no issues on this shoot and I don't think for these kind of shoots you won't run into any overheating issues at all. Another thing to mention when it comes to the post-processing workflow is that I transcoded everything into ProRes before the original files even hit my computer. And that's how we've been handling the R5 as well as the R6 files lately because they're really a pain in the ass to work with and at least on our computers we can't even play them back smoothly. So that extra step of having to transcode all the files into ProRes is definitely time consuming and annoying, but when you do it after a shoot overnight, it's really not that big of a deal. Especially when talking about the EOS R6, those files get a lot bigger though. So when we were looking at shooting, I think that the transcoded files were at least 3.5 to 4 times bigger than the original files produced in camera. But for me, that is a trade-off I am willing to take for a really smooth editing workflow. So what's my overall first impression of the EOS R6 for shooting video, especially for a shoot like this when you shoot mostly in 4K50 and you're shooting at low light, I was really impressed by the camera. Yes, it does have its quirks with the uneditable files as well as the warm colors, but overall for that price segment and getting a full frame really clean 4K50 image with that good of low light capabilities, I think the EOS R6 really did a good job. I shot most of this in autofocus and even in low light at an ISO of 25600, I was really surprised how good the autofocus was. It wasn't perfect and once in a while it did some focus hunting, but again, being it in really low light with really high contrast situations and a lot of light going on with all the street light, I actually think that it did a really good job. And that wraps it up. And again, this wasn't a full review of the EOS R6 for video and more of a first impression, but I will do a full review in the near future. So make sure to subscribe to watch this. And if you wanna see more before and afters and behind the scenes, make also sure to follow me on Instagram. And I hope to see you on the next one.